All right, we'd like to welcome you to another episode of The Walkthrough. Kyle Dawson here with Eric Russell, and we're going to talk about some football games uh, and hand out some game balls as we do every week. And uh, we'll start right out with game balls. And the first one goes to one of our uh, Player of the Week finalists. From uh, a Thursday nighter. Yeah, from a Thursday night game. Darius Johnson uh, went out and rushed for 218 yards on 10 carries. Uh, so 21 yards per carry, which is insane. Well, give him the point eight that goes with it. Well, 21.8. Maybe. Well, we can round it to 22, Give actually. Give him Might 22. as well. And he also scored four touchdowns, so a big game for him and in, uh, in, in a victory for uh, Silver Bluff. Yeah, you know, 95-yard touchdown there fairly early in the game, and it seemed like at that point the route was on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 42-14 for, uh, for the Bluff over Denmark Olar. Uh, we'll go with another one of our finalists for Player of the Week, then. We'll go with Ryan Chavis over at Fox Creek. Uh, he's been on fire the last couple of weeks, this time around in a uh, road game at McCormick. The Predators get their first win of the season. He goes for 144 yards and three touchdowns on 22 carries, had the game winner in overtime uh, for a 20-14 to 14 win up there at McCormick. That's a pretty big day, and uh, might as well round out all the uh, Player of the Week finalists. Next game ball goes to Barnwell's Deshaun Watson, who uh, is kind of a— uh... Back again. <laughs> He just stays on the list. Uh, yeah, he had nine tackles, a tackle for loss, a sack, and an interception that he returned for a touchdown. So uh, kind of uh, got it done on in all types of ways this week. Yeah, yeah he's, he's on the list every week, but it's not we're just putting him there to put him there. Yeah. I mean, he kind of makes us do it. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and so he, he had a big week. and uh, wasn't, wasn't the only one over yeah. there for Barnwell. <laughs> And uh, the, our other recipient for Barnwell is Marcus Robinson, who caught five passes for 108 yards and two touchdowns uh, and helping them defeat Burke as well. So we'll, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll run it over to North Augusta here. Um, we'll, we'll jump from a Thursday nighter back to a, back to a Friday nighter after, uh, after, after a little bit of lightning. <laughs> a little bit of a wait out there, but turned out to be a great game between North Augusta and Blythewood. Uh, another attempt there by North Augusta to work that comeback magic. This time just came up a little bit short. Grayson Bridgers was a big part of that, though, uh, as North Augusta fought back from a double-digit deficit there in the second half. Somehow he just kept getting behind the defense and uh, make, made big plays in the passing game, caught five balls for 126 yards and a touchdown. And a key play there, uh, last play of the first half, drilled a 43-yard field goal to uh, to cut that deficit to three points at the break. And then uh, we'll go with his quarterback, Bradley Godwin. Uh, you know, not the start that he or North Augusta wanted. Uh, you know, passing game wasn't quite working there in the early going. Bounced back, though, for 176 yards and two touchdowns. Ran for a touchdown. There were a couple snaps. He didn't play at quarterback. He was over at wide receiver. Played defensive back, had three <laughs> tackles, and on one play, and I'm still not sure what happened, but he punted. Wow. So, he, you know, he really full, was all over the field. He really was. He really was. And just, you know, kind of exemplified that fight that the Jackets have shown the last few weeks and almost got it done again. All right. We'll, uh, we'll close out all three of our counties uh, and head on over to Edgefield County and Give some game balls out to some kids from Strom Thurmond. Uh, another big victory. They just keep rolling. Uh, and we'll start out with Kaishan Jones. I really hope I said that right. <laughs> he who uh, was one of the big defensive linemen up front for them. And he uh, had four tackles, two sacks, and um, uh, hurried the quarterback and had some other hits on the quarterback that, that didn't result in sacks maybe. But um, big for them defensively yeah. is – you know, pressure up front for them has been key the past few weeks. And, I mean, anytime you can do that without having to send anybody extra, I mean, you're going to make big plays. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then going to the other line, the offensive line, uh, offensive lineman getting some love this week, uh, Tyler Rowland uh, graded out at 88%. And uh, the Strom Thurmond offense went for 400-plus uh, yards and in a victory over Midland Valley. So that that's a big uh, game for him. And, uh uh, helping lead them to that. Uh, and, and then we have Devron Williams, who has had some big games before, and he had another one with uh, five 
and a half tackles and uh, rushed for three touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like, you know, you get inside the, the 10 or so, give him the ball, he's yeah. <laughs> he's in. You know, when you can do that with a uh, with a, with a linebacker and just punish people there and, and convert in the red zone, you know, can't beat it. Yeah. So we'll close it out then. I mean, we're really jumping all over the coverage <laughs> area here. You mentioned going back over to Edgefield County. Let's take it back to, uh, to Barnwell County. Go over to Williston Elko. Uh, a couple of big games for them and a loss to Allendale Fairfax. We'll start with Tyleek Broxton, 13 tackles, forced two fumbles and recovered one. Uh, it was a I mean, game where the Blue Devils, I mean, for, forced some turnovers because then we go to Javier Rudolph, picked off two passes, also ran for 79 yards and had a uh, 14-yard reception. So a couple of, a couple of big games for them and uh, – you know, good time to start heating up because in, yeah. in Region 3A, Region Play starts this week. Yes, definitely. And uh, we'll actually get into some of those games after a, a quick break here for a word from our sponsors. People move to the charming community of Aiken, South Carolina for a variety of reasons. To start a family. To open a business. To pursue a passion. And to embark on a new chapter. Whether you're on the hunt for a 1,000 square foot starter home, a 5,000 square foot vacation home, or a 10,000 square foot office building, or an even bigger piece of land, no one has more knowledge of the entire Aiken market than the Remax Tattersall Group. Local experts in all residential and commercial properties, the Remax Tattersall Group is the only international full service real estate company in Aiken. A member of the Remax Global Network, the Tattersall Group is also the only Remax office in the country that's branded with both collection and commercial designations. The Collection Division provides exceptional service for luxury home buyers, while the Commercial Division is comprised of specialists who only handle commercial sales and leasing. With an in-depth knowledge of the Aiken market and years of real estate experience, our agents make the buying process seamless, from the search to negotiations to closing. Located in the heart of downtown Aiken, the Remax Tattersall Group is ready to help you find a property you'll love. From your first home, to your dream home, to your dream office. From plantations and pastures, to bungalows and buildings. No one opens more doors in Aiken than the Remax Tattersall Group. And we're back. We've got a, a big week ahead of us. Uh, a lot of games. Lots of teams in action. And we'll start out with the game of the week. Allendale Fairfax comes to uh, Aiken County to take on Silver Bluff. Uh, a Silver Bluff team that's coming off of a victory and had, has some good momentum going. And uh, Darius Johnson's kind of uh, get it, up some Get him the ball. And, get him uh, the ball. He's really proving to be that talented player that everyone expected him to be. And Allendale's going to have to deal with that. And I'm, based on the results from the Williston Elko game, uh, they might have to also uh, deal with uh, Donovan Bush on the other side and uh, <laughs> yeah. of the ball uh, coming into this one. Yeah, um, you know, we've seen through a couple of games now those sort of star players for Silver Bluff coming into the year, like the guys. Hey, you gotta you gotta watch these guys. I mean, they've they've delivered. Um, I mean, really, all around good stuff against against Denmark, and that's I mean, it's, obviously we talk more for that region. We've still got another another game to play before we yeah. get into that region play. But I mean, this is when you want to start picking up. You want to start heating up a chance for Silver Bluff at home, homecoming game against Allendale Fairfax for them. Yeah, you know I mean to keep to keep building that momentum. I think they actually have another game after that before region. That's a smaller region there, region two, two a, we had a chance for them to, to, you know, build on this kind of stuff. We saw in the, um, the Williston Elko game, um, just trying to figure out, or we saw in the Barnwell game too, really trying to figure out, you know, different ways to get Darius Johnson, yeah. the ball. Um, Hey, I think something worked against, yeah. uh, against yeah. Denmark. And, uh, I mean, yeah, they can, they can keep that up. And keep finding new ways, unpredictable ways, maybe to, yeah. to mix him in with those other playmakers. Could be really scary. Could be. So hopefully we'll get a, have a good game out there for. But yeah, you mentioned game you mentioned week. Donovan Bush. Oof, man. Yeah. He's <laughs> he's off to a hot start this yeah. year too. We have several linebackers in the area that are uh, performing well. Um, moving right along, uh, we will head. On to the Aiken at Lakeside game, a game that was almost game of the week, but 
did not turn out to be. Um, but Aiken still looking for that first victory, um, heading over to Georgia for a tough one. Uh, they have uh, a tall task ahead of them in slowing down uh, Lakeside's quarterback. So their, their work is cut out. Yeah, it's one of those easier said than done type things. And lots of folks have found that out the hard way the last couple of years. Uh, Jaden Taylor had a big game against South Aiken in their season opener. So though it's a Lakeside team that uh, is only their third game. Um, you know, open against South Aiken, then went on the road on the uh, on the sixth, had a week off. Uh, so either, you know, where are we on that line between fresh and rusty type thing? Uh, for Aiken, you know, this is really the end of their first half of the season because they'll have the bye next week and then right into region play with South Aiken after that. So, you know, just a chance for them to continue to improve. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about a few teams, really, that in terms of wins and losses, who cares what happens these, these first few weeks? I mean, regions where, where you make your money, so yeah. to speak. Um, you know, an opportunity for Aiken this week to, you know, continue to work on the things where they've been seeing progress and really, you know, tighten it up going into uh, to region play. Definitely. Um and another school that's headed over into Georgia uh, to take on team, Midland Valley. Uh, they will head on over and take on ARC. Uh, and kind of in the same boat as, as Aiken. Looking a little to, bit. Looking to uh, get things going there offensively. They've made strides as well. And uh, I'm sure uh, Coach Freeman would, would be excited to get this one uh, under his belt. Yeah, you know, again, we when we talked about Midland Valley last week, just the – Kind of some strange circumstances for them just with that first game with Lakeside. Uh, didn't really happen. Yeah. You know, we got a little bit of time in there. Then they had Grovetown, took time off. Then Thurman came in and, and put some points up on them. So just even for them, it's a chance to start to maybe settle into a routine, if anything, to have, you know, another normal week here. Um Irregular in that they are heading across the river, going over there to see uh, to see ARC. But I mean, a big opportunity here for uh, for Midland Valley to uh, in in the same boat as Aiken for you know starting to make some things work as they get ready for region. They don't have the bye next week though; they have Barnwell next week. Yeah. So you know, another week for them to you know kind of work it out on the field versus in practice or whatever else. But certainly a great opportunity for uh for hey for them to to go out and get one this week yeah so we'll we'll look and see if that this week is the week for those two teams and we're and, hey this next team we're looking to see if it's their week too as as well uh south aiken so close last week uh played a, a good game and had a couple of uh, moments where it, it got away obviously but they'll take on westwood looking to get a win and um i think as Coach Hamilton put it before the game, he was like, if, if we do what we should do, then it will be fine. And in those moments last week that they did those things, they, they were fine. And then there was just a couple of mistakes that proved to be costly. Well, that's, that you know, that's going on you know, three weeks pretty much of those flashes being there, yeah. of you know, what they can be when they are themselves. Yeah. That's what they're working on is – I mean, South Aiken is working on being South Aiken right now. And for, uh, for Coach Hamilton, I mean, he told me they need to go and start making their own good luck instead of kind of waiting back for something bad to happen. You know, there's those handful of plays, like you mentioned, in that Lexington game. I mean, you saw. You know, there's a handful of plays in that game that if they go one way or the other, I mean, ultimately that's going to be what decides, yeah. you know, who, who wins the game. So, they need to be on the right side of those plays. I mean, this is a tough test against yeah. against Westwood. It's a team that shut them out last year um, in a game that got moved because this was you know Hurricane Week yeah, last, last year. year. So a lot of these games that we're talking about either got played that first week in November or didn't get played yeah. at all because they didn't they didn't need to. This exactly. is one where they went ahead and, and played it. But, I mean, it's a really tough Westwood team, you know, tough dual-threat quarterback, team that blitzes a lot. So it'll be important for South Aiken to get kind of that quick passing game going. I know we've seen a lot with E.J. Hickson that, you know, he's so 
elusive. He's so good at buying time if a play breaks down that he can make something happen. This time it might be, you know, more important to watch and see, you know, how quickly he can he can get things done. All right, we'll we'll keep a lookout for that. Um, and moving along to a team that's kind of rolling now. Uh, Shrom Thurman keeps putting up strong performances on both sides of the ball. They'll uh, look to do the same uh, in in a game up in Greenwood against Emerald. And uh, Emerald's not necessarily uh, as as strong of a team as it's been the past couple of years, but uh, uh, I think they'll look forward to this task and test and. Jaquan Harris and and those guys will be ready once again. Big play makers on uh, the offensive and defensive side of the ball for them. Yeah, you know, Thurman's schedule is always so interesting to me, in part because, you know, they go through, they play all the Aiken County schools, uh, the 4A schools, um, but also because, and we talked about it last year too, but I mean, we'll throw that bye week at the end and just, yeah. you know, run through, run through all 10. So... Yeah, I guess there's a couple ways that I look at that where yeah. it's either, hey, you can really start to roll or, I mean, things can start to pile up on you if it's yeah. going the other way. It's just about all going the right way for yeah. Thurmond right now. Again, you know, we have to still go back to that Saluda game at the beginning of the season. The one thing that went wrong. <laughs> Why they could have folded up after that. Yeah, that's true. Especially in these games that are non-region. Who cares? Yeah. You know, in terms of wins, wins and losses. Uh, but... Man, they've they've made some statements yeah. after uh, after that game. They're they're playing strong, you know. They're pressuring the quarterback. They're still forcing turnovers. Um, you know, there's only so much we can say about Jaquan Harris and Stanley Hill that we haven't already yeah. said. And you throw in a Jay Baker for, in the vertical passing game. I mean, they're scary. Yeah, they certainly are. And uh, so Emerald will have uh, their hands full this week um, in that one. Better and, take care of the ball. Yeah. Um, and another team that's rolling. Our, our games are kind of grouped here. Yeah, we're kind of – we're all – I mean, in a way we're all over the place, but at yeah. the same time it's kind of we're riding momentum here. Yeah, and so uh, Barnwell heads into the a game uh, at Wade Hampton, which – This is a huge game. Yeah. It, I mean, again, it's non, non-region and right. all that, but big. it's big. Um, past couple of years there's been some good contests. Uh, I think we were out there for one of them game of the week um but uh there's so much you can say about barnwell but it's obvious yeah (laughs) they're really good on offense craig pender's really good at quarterback the offensive line and jamari chisholm scores a lot yeah the offensive line strong jamari chisholm (laughs) scores a lot the deshaun watson's gonna be over all over the field lighting people up um and yeah (laughs) They're just, they're so good. Yeah. So this is going to be a lot of fun, though. And it's a game that, you know, I'm kind of bummed that they're playing it over in uh, in Varnville, over there in, uh, that's where it is, yeah? Yeah. In Hampton, in Hampton <laughs> County. Uh, thanks, Nick Terry, on that one. I knew I remembered from his old days at the Hampton County Guardian. But this is going to be an awesome game, yeah. I think. You know, you're looking at, I want to say Wade Hampton's ranked sixth in the latest 3A poll. You know, Barnwell's second in Class 2A. Got a first-place vote this week. Wow. Got a first-place vote, which all last year was the campaign for why does Abbeville have to be unanimous? <laughs> Abbeville goes, by the way, and beat a really, really good Southside Christian team. And still, one, one of the voters said, you know what? Enough <laughs> is enough. Let's let's give one of these to, to Barnwell. Uh this is going to be a really, really fun game, I think. I, I think it will be as well, and so we'll see how that one turns out. We'll uh, keep up to date with that one. And another team that is rolling a little bit of momentum, maybe not as much as Strom and, and Barnwell, but... They start, you know what? It's, it's one of those things where with, with Thurmond and Barnwell, like for the, the avalanche or whatever, the, the snowballs like just yeah. rolling down the hill... This is one with Fox Creek where maybe it just got that first push. Yeah, and uh, they'll be going uh, in, up to Columbia to play Columbia after their uh, Fox Creek picked up a big win last week. And first overtime. one of the Lafayette Stewart so era. They're, they're heading into this game with all those good vibes and momentum to take on the Columbia team. Yeah, Thursday night game that they're playing up there at Keenan. Uh, but yeah, for Fox Creek, I mean, they they survived a Durant at McCormick, which. 
can always be dicey. Yeah. <laughs> even with this one being a freshman, it's still a Durant at McCormick. Yeah. Uh, the run game's been working for Fox Creek the last the last few weeks. You know, going and seeing them in that season opener for them against uh, Wagner Sally, you, I saw how explosive they can be. Um, you know, particularly with uh, with Jaden Johnson being able to you know extend plays, you know, make nice throws on target. He could hit the deep ball, that kind of thing. The run game isn't always the easiest thing to get going against Wagner Sally. There were flashes, but the last couple weeks for Fox Creek, I think it's really been working. Uh, Ryan Chavis, last two weeks, 265 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, I fully expect that uh, that, that he's going to pound the rock Thursday night. Definitely, you can expect a lot of that. Um, and uh, so we uh, got all of those out of the way. You spoke earlier about the ones that... Let's get into region yeah, play. It doesn't uh, really matter, but these, these next couple games do matter because... Uh, Class A in, in uh, Region 3A. Uh, what what have we learned about – granted, it's not been Region 3A for the last however many years. Yeah, but, but what have we learned about this region over the last decade plus? If you want to win it, you got to go undefeated. Exactly. And that will probably that be starts the case this again, week. And it starts very early for this region, which is loaded with teams. Richmond, when they're coming uh, off their bye week uh, – probably rested and a good way to start region play and they will take on north in a uh, game the road game for uh, rich spring Mineta. and uh their the game before the uh, bye week was very kind to them by the way so uh, they also have that going for them with a couple of guys uh putting up big performances and hoping that carries over into this H- one huge numbers yes against against whitmire in a game that in the past you know a few years for rich spring Mineta, it's been that's where the run kind of starts for them, or that's where they start to build some momentum is that Whitmire game. But we've not seen them do it quite like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, through the air with, with Remedy Leapart and, uh, and D.B. Harris. I mean, the two of them, you know, hooking up for five touchdowns and just 222 yards between the two of them, just that one connection. Um, so, they, you know, they got to have a week off and now a chance to – I mean, really push the pedal to the floor here against a North team that, you know, the numbers aren't kind to North, if if I can put it that way. Yeah. The numbers, whether it's, you know, wins and losses, whether it's roster size, whatever. I mean, it's just, it's tough for, for them to field a football team up there. So a chance for, for Ridge Spring Mineta to, you know, continue to work on the things that they want to do continue to i mean really sharpen everything because williston's next and that's when we'll start to see where some of those games for them get really big in region and then i'm going of course by recent history here um then toward the end of the season was where they would again find another gear uh so a chance here for them to i mean really start to get into good form because it's going to pick up in a hurry yeah, uh, and uh, another team coming in that region, coming off of a bye week, uh, who maybe they didn't want to have their bye week with the way they've been playing. They no, didn't... they had stuff to work on. Uh, okay, okay. 174 to nothing and had stuff to work on. Uh, <laughs> Willie Fox told – no, it, Willie Fox <laughs> told me that they needed to do a better job of being Wagner Sally and that they needed to tackle better. Okay. So, <laughs> so the, they were they were, those they, things. Hey, they worked on it. And then you just wonder if, if you're Hunter Kennard Tyler and you're like, wait, they're, they're trying to do those things better? Yeah. Um. HKT, though, coming in with a, with a couple of wins, uh, receiving votes now in the Class A poll. Uh, a team, though, that – so last year with HKT, the, the guy that we talked about was Jamario James on the defensive line because at 6'4", 275, how could you not talk yeah. about him? I want to say he was a North South selection, which coming from you know Class A, those guys don't always get yeah. that recognition. I mean, we saw with the Shrine Bowl team. I don't think anybody from Class A got on there. Um, so you got to stand out, obviously, to to get picked for that kind of thing. But uh, he's not there anymore, and so that HKT defensive line now is looking a lot more undersized against a Wagner Sally team that really moves people around 
on the offensive line. So that's what Willie Fox is looking for his team to do, um, to bully HKT up front. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've done a good job of that so far in all of their games. And so. fingers crossed for no fire ants. Yes. Uh, that Cause that was, I believe, two years ago that, that game be, got. The only thing that could stop the Wagner Shelly momentum. <laughs> And even temporarily, because that would be a, hey, let's play in Wagner on Saturday type thing or something. But, uh, you know, it's not a thing about even making a joke, though, because it's happened multiple times (laughs) in recent years. You have to kind of wonder about it. Oh, yeah. We'll we'll hope uh, they'll stay away this time. Um, Our final game uh, to go over, our Another Class A game, region game. Willis and Elko will travel to Estel, and hopefully we'll we'll find out the re- results of that game. <laughs> well, okay, so we hope so, just because a lot of times information doesn't get out of Estel. Um, I've had other coaches tell me that that's just a weird road trip in general. Um, and remember when... Uh, we had the last round of realignment. Estel was not in this region anymore. Then got put back into it because, like, well, there's no one nearby for them to play. Yeah. You know, you couldn't put them in a region with Wade Hampton or something, even though they're kind of close. Yeah. So, you know, it's a weird trip. There's not necessarily a quick way to get there type thing. We've seen, you know, like a good Ridge Spring Mineta team a couple years ago go up there and get stunned. Um, but yeah, it's also a thing where, I mean, win or lose, somehow it's going to end up wrong on max preps. Uh, <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> they still have North beating Estel a couple years ago or three years ago or four years ago, whenever it happened when that did not happen, according to other folks. Who knows? Who knows? But as far as Estel goes, this will be as confident as an Estel team has perhaps has been against Willis and Elko probably since about the mid-90s, if I had to guess, just because Estel's coming in. Got a season opening win over Allendale Fairfax. Um, records are sketchy, but one of the players tweeted that that was the first time it had happened in 28 years. Uh, you don't take a ton out of jamborees and things like that. Estel did beat Willis and Elko in the first quarter of the Region 3A jamboree. Not saying that has any in, or gives any indication of what's going to happen. I'm more so talking about just the confidence yes. thing for Estel that they've seen it happen at least to some degree because it's no a one unit, however, well, a little bit. right? True, <laughs> but no one there has seen anything remotely close to that. Yeah. However, um, not the same group of guys yeah. they're seeing now. Uh, Willis and Elko team that. You know, forced some turnovers last week against Allendale. It's a team that has been kind of steadily getting getting healthier. Um, we'll see what what Estel's got again in terms of their secondary, just because this Williston team throws it around a bit differently yeah. than I mean they weren't they weren't facing you know a potential barrage against. Allendale Fairfax type thing, totally different schemes. It'll be interesting to see what Estel's able to do in the secondary. And also, uh, so another thing with Estel, like we say like information doesn't always get out of there. We also don't always know who's who on the football field. Uh, one guy who's still there, though, Simeon Shiggs, big-time player for Estel. If he's healthy, if he's in the lineup, he's going to be the focal point, and uh, he can make things happen. All right. Well, we'll see what uh, what comes out of that one. So that was 10 week. games. Yeah, 10 games. 10 games, 10 teams playing in 10 games. Uh, North Augusta on a bye. Possibly could not have come at a better time. Just they sustained some injuries in that Blythewood game. Injuries to some key guys in key spots. So hoping that they're able to take this week and uh, you know rehab all of that because uh, – They've got a big one next week with Strom Thurmond coming to town. That that's a week, so that's a big one. That that one should be fun. It's something to look forward to next week. Um, and that's all we have for this week. What? So what game? Do you know what game you're going to yet? Well, you know, in in terms of as we talk about mileage and reimbursement <laughs> and things like that, uh, all of these games are not just out of town, but uh. <laughs> 
pretty good ways. Yeah, pretty good ways out of town. Um, you know, Barnwell Wade Hampton, like that's too much fun, and it's also too far away type <laughs> thing. Um, but no, see, I'm kind of jealous that all of you guys got to see the new scoreboard in action, the uh, new jumbotron, all of that at South Aiken. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, we saw the scoreboard at uh, at the Aiken County scrimmage, but we but didn't it's, see it to it's, its in full glory now. Right, we didn't see it, yeah. you know, in, in its full effect. So. Uh, and you didn't see, get to see the logo on the field at the Jamboree. So I'll get to I'll get to see all of that and see uh, as South Aiken wraps up the uh, the non-region portion of the schedule, looking for that first win of the year, and uh, should be a should be a good football game. Westwood Westwood's a nice team, uh, kind of lurking right there, uh, just outside of the, uh, the 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 top ten in in Class Four A. Uh, you know, quality team. And if South Aiken, from talking with Coach Hamilton and from, you know, having seen them play, they just, they look like they just need that one shove in the right direction and a lot of good things could happen for them. So excited to see if they can, if they can put that together. And, uh, hey, we're going to need people that go to these games to be tweeting about them or something because <laughs> these are some, these are some far out games that we've got this week. Um I mean, excited about a lot of them, especially Region 3A. Yeah, uh, we'll that learn is, a lot uh, about uh, how that's, that's going to shake out this That's week. such a good region when you consider you've got Wagner Sally as the number two team in the state. You've got Blackville Hilda as the number five team in the state. You have Denmark Olar as the number seven team in the state. Ridge Spring Manetta is tied for eighth. HKT is receiving votes. And somehow that doesn't include Williston Elko. Yeah. That's a really, really good region. It's going to be a fun eight weeks or so. Uh, Let's hope it's not eight. Let's hope it's well, only seven. Seven, seven, yeah. If it turns into eight, something went wrong. But uh, <laughs> that's all we have uh, here this week. For Kyle Dawson, I'm Eric Russell. Uh, we'll see you on the sidelines.